I mentioned this earlier, this, this Minnesota stabbing. And the guy that shot the guy who was stabbing everybody in the mall? And you've only heard him described as a former part-time cop? That's not hardly the full story. Larry Pratt's joining us right now from the Gun Owners of America. Larry, how are you? Well, I'm doing fine, Mark. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. So I see that this 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 guy in Minnesota who shot the stabber, uh, the terrorist who was stabbing people and screaming Allah Akbar, is is it like a he 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 has his own gun range and he teaches concealed carry classes. But the media didn't I didn't see that in a single mainstream media report. No, people might get more interested still. <laughs> uh, gee, a, a guy that actually uh, practices what he uh, teaches, uh, that must be some kind of a teacher. Well, thank this is Yeah, this is not just idle information or a pastime. Uh, unhappily, these are vital skills. Well, it's again, a, a good guy with a gun. Thank goodness he was there. Yes. Um, and that's not, that's not what the media wants to talk about. No. And they're kind of between a rock and a hard place because they don't want to talk about the guy uh, being a Muslim. Uh, we saw that in New York. They didn't even want to call it an explosion at first. Right. <laughs> and then, well, yeah, then it was a guy uh, that set it off. And, <laughs> and finally, uh, um, well, yeah, I guess he was a Muslim. Uh, but uh, as uh, Secretary Kerry assures us, this is not the face of Islam. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was a pretty good imitation of Lurch there. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, my neck's not nearly as long as his. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, there there was a lot of denial out there. They jumped all over uh, uh, Donald Trump for daring to suggest too early that it was a bombing. Like, like that? was wrong information it was, there was an explosion in a trash can it's normally a bomb uh, i mean what in the world else might it be uh good grief uh, the garbage had been left there so long that it exploded <laughs> by itself i realize it's new york city but come on <laughs> yeah that would put too much pressure on the on the unions up there that 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 haul the waste we wouldn't want to do that they, they wouldn't want to suggest that um a couple of issues that i wanted to chat with you about specifically i know the united nations is is in new york some people have suggested that possibly uh, these bombs were set off as some sort of a message to all these world leaders i don't know if that's true or not but i know that one thing the u.n is pushing for right now is ratification of this gun ban treaty uh, on, on handguns, and I know that Barack Obama uh, wants wants to include the U.S. in this thing. Uh, what are, what are the ramifications of this? I just thought it'd be a good time to kind of yeah. remind people of that. If this treaty were ratified, if our Senate actually confirmed any signing by the president, uh, we would be in a world of hurt because it would uh, obligate the United States. I would argue unconstitutionally. Uh, to violate the Second Amendment and to start putting the hammer down rest restrictions, registration, licensing, and all kinds of uh, uh, prohibitions uh, that the UN might spell out. And uh, you can't amend our Constitution uh, by a one house change in the Constitution. Namely, treaties are ratified by the Senate, and the Constitution can't be amended except by the whole Congress acting and then a sufficient number of the states. And they would much rather, of course, have a treaty do the job for them. Right. Uh, that's kind of the way the liberals are. <laughs> Any quick route to power is fine. But that's not the way the Constitution spells it out. And I think we've got excellent grounds to to point out, no, this is not right. This is not a constitutional way to go. And frankly, if we want to deal with the UN, it, it would seem to me we're always having budget problems in the United States. Why don't we just cut their budget? Thank you. I, I think the best way to deal with the UN is to, when when Trump gets uh, sworn in, is to appoint John Bolton as as a uh, to the UN again uh, as the ambassador because they all hated him up there because he said that he spoke the truth. They yeah. didn't like John Bolton at the U.N. And they would, I, I would give them a chance to kick him out because I would uh, defund the U.N. <laughs> it would no longer then be in New York. And, you know, maybe they could send it to Tajikistan or someplace where it might be well-received.
<laughs> That's a great point. Um, one, just so people know, one thing that this United uh, this United Nations Arms Trade Treaty would do is it would ban some categories of firearms, including semi-automatics and handguns, require universal gun registrations and licensing, and micro-stamping on, what, a lot of guns and ammunition? Is that correct? That's apparently the uh, dream that they have. Uh, Not that it's uh, a feasible notion, but then they're not interested in feasibility. Oh, gee, it won't work. Well, I guess we'll just have to do away with guns and ammo. Yeah. That's uh, that's quite simply what I think they're talking about. Uh, it's not going to solve crimes. You don't yeah, the idea of micro stamping ammunition. I don't know if they have any idea what happens to a bullet when it's fired, but there's not going to be a whole lot of evidence left for the micro stamp to help them uh, in a court of law. Oh, I it's know. Not- <laughs> Some of these crazy uh, legislators in the state of Illinois, state legislators from Chicago, surprise, surprise, have introduced a bill over there to require all ammunition sold in, sold in the state of Illinois to be uh, have a serial number on it or something or be registered somehow. If they ever were able to pass that into law, you simply wouldn't be able to legally buy ammo in Illinois. Because I can't imagine... No matter how big a market Illinois might be, uh, who would want to uh, even attempt something that would be as prohibitively expensive, even if it were technically feasible, uh, to micro-stamp, to stamp a serial number on every bullet, every casing, uh, and then they're going to find out that Oh, the crooks are using revolvers, and there's no casings left at the at the scene of the crime. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I know it's it's uh, it's crazy. Let me get you off to another subject here, real quick. This weekend, Donald Trump suggested that Hillary Clinton was was opposed to the Second Amendment, and maybe if she if she really believes that nobody should have guns, her Secret Service agents should give up her guns. Their guns. He must be reading what we have been saying for some time. Hooray! Uh, (laughs) Donald Trump wasn't even our first choice, but if he's going to talk like that, he certainly makes himself sound better to me. And uh, I just think that's a lovely pushback on Hillary Clinton. Practice what you preach, my good lady. Yeah, well, of course, he immediately gets attacked as as supposedly... um wanting to encourage violence against her and how they got that out of that statement i i have no idea no if anything she's uh, sort of inflicting violence upon herself if the logic of what she's talking about were really such a good idea well then she should tell the honorable secret service agents uh, the next morning that she goes out uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, we're going to start practicing what i preach yeah exactly the secret service agents who according to uh, former agent gary burns she holds in such disdain who've been protecting her for the last 30 years carry my suitcase boy yeah exactly exactly <laughs> larry pratt with the gun owners of america I direct people to your website gunowners.org. people can sign up for alerts and find out what's going on in the fight for your second amendment rights i appreciate your time hey thanks so much good to be with you yep, Mark. good to be with you thank you very much and always enjoy getting larry on the air got to get to a break real quick and then i'll get to you